Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to, so for the second one, I'm just going to draw the figure. So it says P720. Uh, so we have A going to B along a straight path. And there's a bead. And then we have a curved path with another bead. Okay, so um, for the straight path, first we have our mass is 25 grams. The length um, of the wire is 0 0.600 meters and the height from A to B is 0 0.200 um, meters I used. But I just realized it doesn't really say, <laughs> but it must be, it must be meters. Um, and we have a constant friction force of 0 0.0250 um, newtons. Um, so we could easily, so the first question is just uh, what is its speed? So if VI is 0, what is VF? So so we release it from rest at A, what's its speed at B? Um, so this is quite a simple question without friction. So our initially, our, we can use energy conservation, so our energy initial would equal our energy final. Um, I should put without friction. Um, but with friction, it's going to um, lower our energy by the work. So our final energy is going to be our initial energy minus our work due to friction. And our work due to friction is just going to be um, our frictional force times our distance, which is 0 0.0250 times the 0 0.600 meters, which comes out to be 0 0.015 newtons. Okay. Um, Okay, so that's how much we're going to lower our energy. Um, now we need to fill in kind of these other terms. So our initial energy is just our gravitational energy. So it's going to be MGH. Choosing the zero of gravitational energy at B. So that would be um, 25 grams times 9.8 meters per second squared times 0 0.2 meters and then multiplying by um, 1 kilogram per 1000 grams to cancel the grams and give us uh, a value in kilograms meters squared per second squared which is a joule um, so running through each all of these values, uh, we get 0 0.049 joules. And then our final energy <clears throat> is going to be purely kinetic. Um, but we can solve for it now. So our EF is 0 0.049 joules. I'll 
I made a mistake on my work, just a slight. So a newton meter is a joule, not a newton. So that should have been joules. Alright. And so our final energy is going to be this 0.049 minus our our frictional work, which is then uh, 0 0.034 joules. Our final energy is purely going to be um, kinetic energy. Uh, but we can write it as kinetic plus potential, um, but our potential is zero as um, mgh is equal to mg times zero as we've chosen our zero of potential at B. And so ki kinetic energy is just one half mvf squared. And so that we can now put these two together and say that one half mvf squared is uh, 0 0.034 joules or uh, vf is uh, 2 times 0 0.034 joules over m square root plugging in some values here now 2 0 0.034 joules over 25 grams times a thousand grams per kilogram just to put it into the proper units so we can cancel out our joules and remember that a joule is a kilogram meter squared per second squared so this kilogram will cancel with this one leaving us with meter squared per second squared which after the square root will be in meters per second which is our speed so now this is square root of 2.72 meters squared per second squared, which gives us 1.649 um, meters per second. And just looking for, so everything's got three significant digits. So I guess, but, oh yeah, these should have all been zero, but whatever. So this is 1.65 meters per second with significant digits. So that, that's our, there's our final speed. Um, and then part B of the question just asks um, if a bead is released from rest, In, along this path or this path, which will arrive at B faster. Um, now this one's a little tricky um, because without friction, um, the, the lower bead should arrive faster as it reaches its terminal velocity um, at a higher rate therefore traveling in the end along B faster. Um, but with friction, we now have a longer path. And so uh, without being given the exact path length, um, our work due to friction will increase as our D increases, which means that our EF, which equals EI minus our work due to friction, is so our EF is going to decrease. So our final velocity will be less. Um, and um, and so presumably 
it's going to travel along the the lower path slower because the path is because the path length is higher and our energy is is lower um, yeah so checking through uh, the solution we have here so we're given the me the the mass the path and the height difference is our frictional force um, so we can get our initial energy as MGH which comes out to be 0.049 joules um, energy loss due to friction is 0.015 uh, which is just our uh, force times our distance um, that means our our uh, energy, our final energy is just that minus um, our initial energy minus our work due to friction which comes out to be 0.034 that equals our final energy which is just kinetic so we can solve for VF and if we do we get uh, 1.65 meters per second um, and then yeah for part B the mass and friction is the same so the path length is now larger um, for the lower path increasing the energy loss so it reduces the speed of the lower bead um, but which which arrives first is hard to say I would say but I presume the top path should arrive faster. Um, so I presume the the top path should be should be faster. So let's say the solution is correct.